Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Uh, again, I'm Stephen Matty. I'm chair of the Committee on Standards and Ethics. I'm joined by Steve Levin and Karen Kozowitz. Margaret Chin was with us uh, this morning in public session and also in executive session. I'm also, we are also joined by our general counsel, Jim Karras, and our committee to the council, Ben Smith. The Committee on Standards and Ethics opened a meeting earlier today regarding a pending disciplinary matter initiated pursuant to Section 10.80 of the council rules. Because it was necessary for the committee to discuss confidential personnel issues in conjunction with the pending disciplinary matter, the committee voted to move into executive session pursuant to Article 7 of the Public Officer's Law. We are now returning to open session to make public the outcome of today's vote regarding the pending disciplinary matter. Based upon a wide-ranging investigation conducted by both the Council's Office of the General Counsel and the Special Counsel retained by the committee to investigate and prosecute this disciplinary proceeding, the committee voted today to issue multiple charges against Councilmember King. In sum, the charges allege that between 2017 and up until just two days ago, Councilmember King engaged in conduct that violated multiple provisions of Council Resolution Number 1138 of 2019, violated certain laws of the City of New York, the rules and policy of the Council, as well as possible certain laws of the State of New York. More specifically, the charges we voted to issue against Councilmember King are as follows disorderly conduct, conflicts of interest violations, violations of council resolution number 1138 of 2019, and violations of the council's anti-discrimination and harassment policy, which allegedly occurred in 2017. As you all know, on October 28th, 2019, the council unanimously, except for council member King, voted to issue the most sweeping and serious sanctions ever posed against the council member. Among those sanctions was the placement of a monitor in Councilmember King's office to protect his staff against the sort of egregious behavior laid out in the committee's report supporting the resolution and to ensure that the council's rules and policies were adhered to by Councilmember King. Since Councilmember King's return from the one month suspension imposed on him by the council, it is alleged that he repeatedly worked to circumvent the monitor and he has violated the large majority of the provisions of the resolution. Additionally, and since the issuance of our report, both our committee counsel and the special counsel were approached by additional witnesses with new information regarding alleged past misconduct by Councilmember King. Among this misconduct was a completely unacceptable, unacceptable violation of the council's anti-harassment and discrimination policy. Finally and again, we cannot at this time provide great detail, but there are also allegations of misappropriation by Councilmember King of public funds for his own personal benefit. We, of course, take such violations of the public trust incredibly seriously and are also issuing charges specific to this apparent misconduct. I must stress how deeply and profoundly troubled this committee is by the allegations set forth in the charges. While we do not take issuance of these charges lightly, especially so soon after the prior charges and resulting resolution, we must also, must, we must also act to protect our council staffers and address alleged violations of council rules and city and state laws. We're here to serve the people of the city and act as stewards of the public trust. If any member um, amongst us fails to honestly and steadily carry out those responsibilities, appropriate action must be taken to address that conduct. With that, pursuant to the rules of the council and the procedures of the committee, we will hold a dis disciplinary hearing on these charges on March 9th, 2020, beginning at 10 a.m. The hearing will be held in executive session and council member King has a right to be represented by council at the hearing. The council's special counsel, Carrie Cohen, will again present the case against Councilmember King to the committee. While the proceedings are confidential, after the committee deliberates on the charges, the findings and recommendations of the committee will be made public in a report to the council. This concludes our summary of the committee's votes during today's meeting, and I'm now going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you.